Hello guys and welcome back. This is another Q&A session where I answer your questions that you leave in the comments where I can't really address them properly with a response through text. Uh, it's, it's something that needs a little bit more unpacking. So the question today comes from, it's going to be really difficult to pronounce, Adam Kneko. I'm sorry, I don't know if that's your last name, but I can't really pronounce it. His question is, I'd like to know what to stay away from, such as materials, manufacturers, types of clothing, styles, etc. I believe there are a lot of things that people wear that they should be staying away from. Yeah, I agree. There are a lot of materials and manufacturers and stuff like that that are, are dishonest, you know, if it's a company. There are a lot of materials which are subpar. But I think that the overall concept that we have to look at here is what the price you're looking at is, okay? So if you're somebody who just simply can't afford more than $100 for shoes or a suit or something like that, then you're not really going to be able to be very picky. If you have all the money in the world, then you can afford to go to, you know, Michael Andrews Bespoke, have, you know, the whole full experience where they take you out to dinner and all that stuff. But most of us, I think, fall somewhere in between where we're looking to get the most bang for our buck. And so how do you do that? Well, I... I help you do that. That's kind of what I'm trying to do here um, as far as manufacturers go. A perfect example is Filson. So I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Filson. I really like their luggage. I like their original briefcase, stuff like, you know, it's made out of that twill and leather. I think they did a great job. The history of Filson is actually really interesting, and I'm going to make a video on it. It's not exactly going to be the most flattering video because it's truthful. But the fact is they, got, they ended up getting bought out. Their, their old tagline used to be, uh, might as well have the best. And they used to make some of the best stuff out there. I mean, their Mackinac wool is still great. It's expensive, but it's still great. And uh, like I mentioned, their, um, their luggage is actually really, really good. But the problem with Filson is that since they got bought out by that corporation, they've really used their name to suggest quality rather than putting it into their products. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. So you can buy a, I think it's called the Alaskan Guide shirt. It's basically a flannel shirt from Filson. And it costs somewhere in the range of $110 to $125. It's not a bad looking shirt, made in Sri Lanka. You can buy basically the same shirt from L.L. Bean for like 50 bucks. And I'm telling you, it's basically the same shirt. The label's different, but it's also made in Sri Lanka. It's also made out of the same kind of cotton brushed flannel material. It's basically the same shirt. There are definitely products that Filson has that you can't find an equal to. I mean, again, their Mackinac wool, some of their luggage, it's really, really great. People wear it or use it and get them passed down. My father's Mackinac wool cruiser, I still have that. It's hard to argue with that. But a lot of their other products I wouldn't get. And some of their products just baffle me. They have a snack table. And it's like a expensive snack. Okay, you're a rugged guy, right? Or at least you like rugged stuff. Why do you have to have a snack table? It, that makes no sense. The last thing I want to bring with me when I'm out camping is a freaking table. It kind of gives you an idea of how out of touch they are. They're not the company that they once were. So there's a good example of a manufacturer or a brand which I would just be careful about because oftentimes you're paying for the Filson name on there. Uh, the same thing I think can be said for Saddleback. Now, I know there are plenty of people who love Saddleback. Uh, they really rubbed me the wrong way when they increased their prices overnight between, I think it was September and August, one year. And it was significant increase. It was shocking. What really got under my skin was like, what if you were the guy who was saving up 300 bucks to buy one of their briefcases? And then the next day you look and it's $425. Uh, I used to have a spreadsheet somewhere with all of their prices and then after the increase, what they were. The way to do this is incrementally. Now, we all understand inflation, so your price has to go up with inflation. We get it. No problem. And I think most people are understanding that, you know, hey, prices do have to go up because gas is going up. So, uh, you know, your transportation costs, you know, your fuel to heat the building, all that stuff goes up, just not all at once overnight. That's what really got a lot of people upset. And I still, to this day, won't buy anything from Saddleback. It's just there are, first of all, too many other great options. And uh, the fact that they did that, it, uh, it says to me that they don't really care about their customers that much. Agree or disagree? It's fine. I could be wrong. Now, as far as materials to stay away from, I mean, most of the time I would say synthetic materials aren't that good. But then again, it depends on the application. So 
For example, the sunbrella lining that's on the inside of the Cravar bags, on the inside of the Frank Clegg bags, and it's meant for that purpose. That is actually meant for the sun shades, like the sun awnings that you see that go over um, windows and, and doors and stuff like that. That's what that product is meant for. So it it's, it's, doesn't really need to be a breathable fabric. Wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to have a cotton awning, you know? And they use it on the inside of the bag because it's abrasion resistant, because it's somewhat waterproof, and it really works well as a protective layer, and that's why it's on the inside of the bag. It's not necessarily the most beautiful looking thing, but again, it's all the application. When it comes to stuff that's actually on your body, again, it depends on the application. So when you're talking about underwear, for example, and you get a pair of, one of the companies that I really like is a, a, a brand called Two Under, and they make um, a model called the Power Shift, which I really like, and that's basically all polyester. The reason that they use polyester is because it has several properties that you simply can't get in a natural fabric, which would be uh, stretch, uh, color fastness. A lot of these tech fabrics have moisture wicking, you know, and the ability to make them in almost perforated designs. It's really difficult to do that. I know that sometimes hop sack gets close, but it's difficult to do that. So that's the reason they use it. And oftentimes when it comes to the material, it's going to depend on the application. I think that natural fibers are the nicest feeling against your body. So when you're going to buy a shirt or something like that, um, mat I think natural fibers are the best or a nice natural fiber blend. I could tell you more about what you could look for, like bamboo, wool, things like that, and their pros and cons, and I could to tell you what to stay away from because most of the stuff now has gotten pretty good. The leisure suit, the polyester leisure suit, is long gone. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. If you have a question that you would like answered, please just let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer it. I'm going to try to do this once a week. Uh, at times, we may miss a week or something like that, depending on what's going on in my normal life, but I'll do my best to answer the questions. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you next time.